Hey, ducks, it's Simon here. Welcome back to the Hermit's Cave. So today I thought I would uh, do a bit of an update video. About a year ago now I showed my uh, reading space and this is kind of what you see. That's kind of what you see from when I'm doing uh, my videos but you don't often see what's behind the camera and you know the the area in which I sit at quite a lot of the time really certainly first thing in the morning last thing at night or when I go from work um which is what my reading table is so I thought I would uh, just pop on do a bit of an update and show you the things that are on my reading table why they're on there in the first place because you know the significance that they they hold um, just before I start on this this space, <laughs> this is my corner of the room. Um, the rest of the room, you know, isn't as as cluttered as this. But I don't know. I just really like having this space that has a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of it is things that people have sent to me, things that I've collected. Um, but they all assist with my uh, practice of reading and using divination etc so just before we start on the reading table just a few things that are around my reading space which are also important um just here this is my um it's kind of like a wheel so there is a fire and ice crystal for each of the eight sabbats which go around my crystal ball. This is a stand that I've got for my uh, crystal ball, which is this, um, it's a witch's cauldron with three broomsticks. And that is next to where I sit here on the, on the sofa. Um, I have my little bear tea light holder, which has some earthy kind of stones in there, like desert, um, desert rose and some petrified wood things like that. I've got my uh, wand that says Simon in the using the Oum alphabet which was a gift by Neris and then I've got this oil burner which I have on even though it's a light and it's beautiful it's a 3D effect one it has some oil um, in the top there that you can probably see which lets off a beautiful aroma. I've got my little pixie tribute which was um, an additional card that uh, Christoph put in for the Rain Coast Tarot, which I love. Um, but yeah, that sits at the side of my, my reading space here. Over in this corner, now you've probably, I've not long shown uh, the things I have here. This is my little corner to the God and the Goddess. So I've got my uh, moon gazing hair plaque up there, which was a gift from Sandra a couple of years ago. Um, this that was made by Becca when we went and stayed with her, I think the first time we went to, to stay with her, it was inspired by um, the Blair Witch Project. And then I've got my God and Goddess here, which are Philippa Bauer's creations. And I got them both in Glastonbury, one each year, because they are a little bit expensive. I think these were around 100 and, is it 140, something like that. And I've got my Goddess candle in the middle. Then when we come down a level, I've got my hair, because hairs are very important to me. Um, I've got a scrying obsidian sphere, which sits on this stand. I only got that in the summer. This beautiful piece of quartz, which I've had for a number of years now. It just pulsates and, and glows. I love it. Uh, my Glastonbury Tour and some chalice well water. That is my little corner. This staff here was made for me. Look at that goddess on it. Um, it's got a crystal point and it's a great big long staff. Then on the wall here, I've got a moon gazing hair. My tribute to the king, <laughs> not Elvis. Uh, the king for me is Freddie Mercury. Um, and then lots of different artworks that people have either 
sent to me. Um, but yeah, they're, they're all important pieces. This is the, the Hermit's Cave print that um, was made by the lovely um, Comrade Stain. And this is a, a painting, an oil painting that was done by Jennifer Storelli's partner of a hermit in the this coming looking out of the cave into the woodland area so that's what's around and then of course that's what's around my desk i have my decks which are here um and there's around about 600 about 650 tarot decks these are all tarot oh that one's wonky that's going to annoy me i'll have to put that right um, and yeah, that's, that's my decks. So let's have a look at the reading table. Firstly, this is the arm. So when I do my, um, face down filming, as you can see here, if you imagine this is cradled here, this is, this is then what you see when I do my, my filming. So that's going to be in the way. So I'm going to push that out of the way. Um, so we can have a look at what's on the desk. So firstly, I suppose we ought to talk about this this cloth. Um, probably needs a bit of a wash actually. I've had it for about three months now and I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. I love the combination anyway of purple and gold. It's one of my two favorite color combinations. Um, but this was a a wrap that is available from Lush. I don't know if Lush is an international shop or not, but it's a very popular high street shop here in the UK. It's um, it's a perfume type uh, soaps and all that sort of thing, but ethically sourced, uh, very big on being, you know, um, free from any forms of animal tests and things like that. So it's got a very good reputation, a little bit pricey, in terms of their products but i think it's worth paying that extra to know that you know all of the products are ethical products so yeah and this was about five pound i think but it is really really good quality it's double lined because it's really um really big um but yeah it does need to come off and have a bit of a a wash soon so that's what's um here is my background at the moment this tends to change every couple of months you know i've got a lot of spread cloth so um, when i take this off to wash it i tend to lay another one down it just takes a bit of effort because i've got a lot of things that are um on my reading space and it means taking everything um everything off so let's have a look so here um, I think it's really important on, for me anyway, on any sort of altar, sacred space, reading space, that the elements are represented. And as a tarot reader, I really like having these representations here. Um, the, the two, which is the wand and the sword that I've got here, were add-ons for a Kickstarter campaign for a deck that um, was released probably about a year ago. Um, which was the heart spun tarot and it did come with a little plastic cup and uh, a very tiny pentacle but I kept the the sword and the wand and then over time I've added this was a pendant that I used to wear it's a little bit bigger so it's more more noticeable um, and then this cup this beautiful cup I only got last month um, which was a, a gift from James who create some amazing things and you'll see some of the things that um, I've got at the moment. But I really like this because do you see this little imperfection crack here? I can't think of what the process is called, but in Japan, you know, if, if uh, pottery in particular got cracked, they would fill it with gold. So it's just really nice. And I thought that would be a perfect cup to, to replace the plastic one that I had. So I've got my wand, which is fire, cup which is water the swords which is air and the pentacles which is which is earth um let's just move the camera up a little bit so you can see here as well so i've got a number of decks around me 
um, which I'll which I'll come on to. But first things first, um, the two that I work with the most live in this little um, stand box that was made by my stepdad and I love it. This little hermit's cave, I think this is written so beautifully. The calligraphy is wonderful for this. It's a bookmark, but I tend to have it there because it makes a nice little uh, background item for um, my videos. So the two decks that I'm working with at the moment, these are in beautiful Kelly Bear pouches as well. Um, this one is the Moon Baby Tarot, indicated here with the, the moon. Look at the colours, really gorgeous. Kelly Bear matched the colours perfectly for uh, the Moon Baby. Look at that, the green and the green. The pinks, just perfect. And it doesn't show too clearly on camera. It never does with anybody's videos, but they are, they have got this pink edge in. It's like a soft, powdery baby pink. But the colour tones in this, um, I really, really love this deck. Beautiful quality, exceptional quality. It's uh, it's originated from the Hoi Polloi Tarot, which was a 19, early 1970s deck. So, yeah fits beautifully and the thing that kelly does with her pouches she makes them um just so so that they sit very snugly and don't move about um inside the pouch so as long as you put them in you know directly and then they fit wonderful so that's the first one the second one here i've put, spoke about a lot recently and i wanted this kind of pinky purpley pouch and I bought this just a couple of weeks ago it's got this little pegasus on it um, beautiful pink on the inside and that is for um, my Lionsgate um, tarot which again same card quality lovely matte thick cardstock um, like the moon baby tarot but these two decks in particular I'm really enjoying uh, working with at the moment so they're out Pride a place on my reading space. So I can just grab them. This changes uh, quite quite often, uh, but these are the two that I've certainly been working with through the month of November. I'm coming to the kind of final week of November now. So they live there. Other things around the space, um, tea light holder, I think it's quite beautiful. It was just one that I picked up from um, the candle shop, Yankee Candle. <laughs> I had to think then. Um, my Rose Quartz Goddess. I love this. Now, this was an expensive item. I went into a shop in Leicester um, a few months ago, probably around July time, I think it was. And she was sitting there on the shelf and she just looked so beautiful. I'm not quite sure. It, I mean, it's subtle, but you can see her eyes and, and everything when the light catches it. It looks like her breast is chipped, but it's not. It's it's just the coloration of it. And she's got her hands in her lap and she's just gorgeous. And she's quite a big piece. It was just under a hundred pound, but I love rose quartz. It has such beautiful, beautiful properties. Um, so she sits on my desk. She's got this little wooden stand here. And I've got a little, you know, because she's Gaia. I've got a globe in front of her. Um, and that's that's really nice. I've got a beautiful piece of deep. Because um, sometimes when you buy amethyst, it's uh, it can be quite pale. But this is a lovely piece. And I bought it in a sale the first time I went to Glastonbury from a shop called Crystals. They had an, a sale on amethyst and I got this for about £20, I think £15-£20. And it was down from about £45. So I got a real good bargain there. And then I just got all their kind of earthy stones. Because again, with my reading space, I like, um, I like to try and make sure I've got all of the elements represented. This is some petrified wood. It's old bog wood from thousands of years old. Um, I've got um, some deer antler here. 
Now, this isn't, you know, um, taken from antler. This is naturally shred, shed, <laughs> not shred, naturally shed antler. Um, and it was from a shop in Glastonbury. And again, ethically, ethically, ethically sourced. Um, just before we go to this side, I'll just mention if I can turn the camera this way a bit. So you'll see, this is where I have my daily draw items. There we go. And I'm using, at the moment, I've been working with the Llewellyn Tarot just over the last week or so. And since I did my video on uh, modern classics, I really, and I've always used, this was a backup copy, I've always used my trimmed version. But I found doing that video, I'd got a new appreciation for the bordered version. Now, in this box here, and I'm sorry there's so much moving around, let's just take these uh, dowsing pendulums off. So I do have some dowsing pendulums. This is a really tiny little, very responsive, this one, um, hematite one. I mentioned James earlier who made this cup. He made me a couple of years ago this beautiful box in 3D and it has the hermit on it. Isn't this gorgeous? Look at the light from the, the way it's been painted, the light from the lantern glowing here and then the darker themes here. It's painted all the way around, which is really nice. So in here is where I keep um, a beautiful bag that was made for me by a subscriber. Look at this, just gorgeous. And it's beautifully lined, as you can see. Really, really gorgeous. And there's just a few little bits and bobs at the bottom of there. So this is where I'm keeping my Llewellyn Tarot at the moment that I've been using for my morning pools. And I've been selecting one of the two decks in the evening. Um, but it's stunning. And I think it's great when we can fall in love all over again with decks that we've had for a few years. So my Hermit's Cave bag um, has the, uh, a look at the inside there. It's like a Jackson Pollock, but it's to replicate the Starry Night. Um, so yeah, that goes there in the corner. Let's pop these. The trouble is with that cup, it does keep falling over, but it's on a, a bit of a bumpy surface. Just behind that here, now this is a favorite of mine. This is the Cartomancer Poker Deck, I think it's called. Yeah, Cartomancer Poker Deck. And this is beautiful quality. It is card, playing card size. You can see it's got linen and it's, you can use it as a playing card deck, but you get these keywords and images as well. So it is designed for uh, cartomancy and I love it so much really really do love it so um, that is always out on my desk as well and I bought this leather leather case for it to to house it in I have my little goddess bottle so this has chalice well water in it um, which you just take the cork out can you hear it? So it's got some chalice well water in it. Again, to have the element of water represented on my reading space. And there's this beautiful goddess on it. And I love this. Um, I've got quite a lot of uh, this. I forget what it's called. I can never remember. Um, I can't make that out now. Let's have a look. Let's get my magnifying glass, see if that helps. Win Abbott, that's it. Win Abbott Ceramics, and it's this beautiful uh, blue and brown. And I've got quite a few items like this. Um, just behind here, you'll see on this bottom shelf is a lot of decks that are in bags. And these are decks like my Soul Cards 1 and 2, which I've got as one, um, one super deck, if you like. There's the five cent tarot there 
there's the um, Whisper in the Ear Oracle and this one here in this Kelly Bear pouch if I can if I can grab it probably can't now I've I've done this there we go um, this is one of my favorite Marseille decks which is the Tarot Des O Arcs. Absolutely beautiful. And I showed this quite recently on a video. And again, this is the first edition with these backs and it matches perfectly because there's lots of, lots of blues um, in this deck, as you can see. And it just matches the, the bag. And I love that. And I edged it in blue as well to give that effect the same as the the pouch. There is a second edition as well, which I which I use a lot. So that lives there. I'll just pop that back. Okay. So here it's just a cat. I love working by candlelight. And whilst I have these little tea lights, which are great, this, these are paraffin uh, candles and they just glow beautifully. And we're in the middle of daytime now, so you, you don't get the full effect. But at night time, this, especially having it encased um, in this glass funnel, this radiates a lot of light and it really casts a beautiful glow over uh, my reading space here. Um, in the corner, I've got this. This was a card, it was an extra card um, that came from Tarot Collectibles. And I really love it as a quote, so I keep it out. It says, through all the ages, seers have sought the ways of fortune, fate and strife. They wrote their knowledge on the cards as signposts for the road of life. And isn't that gorgeous? So I really like that. So I have that out. Also, in form of crystal, there is this beauty. If you saw the Glastonbury video, you will know that I picked up this piece of obsidian um, for a song, really. I thought this would be about £100, but it was something like £30. And it has the most amazing grounding energy to it. Um, this really represents Earth quite well. Oh, I've just found the little pentacle that used to go here. Let's just pop that on the, the shelf for a second. So it is really beautiful. Someone said you can scry with it, and you absolutely can. On the back here, it's very smooth and perfect for scrying. Um, but I do prefer to use my obsidian globe that's over there for that. But this this feels wonderful just to sit and hold and, and scent yourself and ground yourself. Um, I have a little Om stone, which I've had for a number of years now. My moon gazing hair stone. I use this for casting because it's flat. Um, and you know, if I put it in the middle or on a bigger space, which I like to use for things like Oem, you know, if I'm casting um, Oem staves, then the ones that are around this as a, as a focal point. In the corner here, in this little, and all these shelving that I've got around, they're all made by my my stepdad, who, you know, is always saying to me, what would you like me to make you next? <laughs> Which is wonderful. I've got this stone, uh, stone, it's a slab actually, uh, which has the hermit on it, which I love. And then this box, um, look at this, we've got a hermit hair, and this was made by Shane, who's a Jen's son. You know, Jen Jen from Jen's Balanced Tarot. Um, her son, Shane, made me this. And I absolutely love it. He does this beautiful wood burning. Um, and his partner, Oliver, helped as well. It's got a little patch. Oops. And at the moment, it's got some of my um, oils in for, um, you know, using on pulse points. He put a $1 bill in, which I liked. But yeah, we've got these beautiful oils and things. So they're in there. They don't have a deck in them at the moment because it's hard to get to. Um, oops, let's pop that back. It's hard to get to when it's behind things. So um, I just, every so often, when I've finished with one of the oils, I'll go and get one um, from there. Oh, 
So let's pop, pop that back. Um, the other stones are beautiful stones that I like, like fluorite, mookite. This was sent by Hen in uh, Australia. Got hagstone here. Um, so yeah, these are very earthy type stones that I like on my reading space. Okay, what shall we look at next? So I think if we start at the lower levels and then work our way up, so I'm going to take you now to this corner. Okay, so in this corner, um, again, it's some decks that I like to, to work with. Um, or oh, this is, this. if you can see this here, this mobile with the moon. This was sent by Brandt um, from Moon Baby Tarot. Um, but I've got this like little office tidy here. Do you notice the tray here? That is for when I light the smokeless incense. So I often use these. These are the morning star and this is the cedar wood. So I'll just give you a, can use a little candle here, flame. Okay, that's got them lit. Um, so it is smokeless, well less smoke, and it will it will die down, and you just literally drop them into the tray like that, and they'll just they'll just burn away, and they give off a beautiful beautiful aroma, and nothing is left afterwards. There's no sticks or anything like that. It's just pure incense that burns away. I want to just mention my mug. My mug is one that I always have on my desk. This was a gift from Jen Jen. Um, she sent it me for my birthday last month and it's the hermit card and again it's just beautiful this this stoneware is so lovely so yeah gorgeous I love this I spilt some water now because it's got like a bit of water from when I washed it last um so yeah in this office tidy I will have to move a few things to show you what's in the drawer so we'll just move these out the way a little bit. So you can see now how this is how this is burning away. It's a lovely little uh, tray for it. So on the top, I've got my uh, CS Tarot Jumbo size, which I've edged to match the backs in this kind of amber. Um, again, beautiful there. You've heard me talk about CS Tarot um, a lot. And then just behind it, I have the CS Tarot in the mini. So this is classed as the pocket edition, but it's it's diddy, really, really tiny. And then I have my Tarot in a tin, which again, I showed when I did my divination tools last weekend. In the drawers, in this one, I have CS Tarot with the amber backs and this, um, this is really nice, superior smooth cardstock. So you get a theme here that's happening. Um, and then at the bottom, oh, let me grab these. This is my favorite Marseille, and that's why it's always out. And this is the new choice Tarot de Marseille. Just look at those colors. And more and more card decks now are coming with this cardstock. But when I first got this, I'd never felt cardstock like it. It's absolutely, listen to that noise. That sound, I should say, noise. It's really beautiful. And look at that. This is one of my favourite Aqua Aura um, rose quartz. Gorgeous. So they live in there. Pop that one back. Let's put this back in the tray and um, in the kind of dividers here I've got a pl playing cards this is the 18th century English cards beautifully printed no numbers just the the pips or the courts really nice cardstock um, and it was a gift from Nancy um, Texas Rose, Nancy, this beautiful card case to keep it in. Um, I have the El Goliath Tarot, which gorgeous deck. 
often reach for this so it's not on the shelf with all the others it's here and then i have the marseille weight again gorgeous deck love it this one which is wrapped in purple silk is my very special CS Tarot. So most CS Tarots are here, uh, but this was a special one that was gifted to me by the creator um, to recognize the 10,000 subscriber mark. So you'll see the YouTube logo, the Roman numeral for 10,000 and the Hermit's Cave. Um, and it's, it's gorgeous. This gilding is so beautiful. So that was a very treasured um, gift. So it gets wrapped in silk to show my love and appreciation for the deck. The front two are MPC uh, cards. And this is a vintage 1JJ Swiss. 1JJ Swiss was my first ever tarot deck back in 1987. Um, and I love it now that it's um, full tarot size and vintage. And then the vintage Aquarian Tarot. Again, really lovely. It's got this aged effect. And these are large cards, almost like oracle size cards, but you get to see so much of the image. So let's pop everything back into its, its place. The only other thing to mention is I found this on the beach and I love this. Um, just washed up on the beach, feels nice. So I have that there in the corner. This is a hair, but it's actually a card holder as well, um, which was, there was available last Christmas from a supermarket here called Sainsbury's. So I got one of them. And then in this little uh, beautifully painted box is my favorite dowsing crystal. And I've showed it quite recently. It is gorgeous and it was made by a subscriber, Twist the Leaf. And so, yeah, this is my, my favorite dowsing crystal. Really, really love it. So it gets a little, little case to sleep in and rest between use. So that goes back there. Let's pop the candle back. Okay, what else? Um, pens, this is my, you know when I grab and say, let's do a size comparison, that's where this lives. It's just a blank US game size tarot card for tarot comparisons. Um, this is a beautiful mug, moon gazing hair mug that was bought for me by Sandra at the Whispering Well. But the handle makes a clicking noise and I was frightened that it would crack. So I use it as a bit of a uh, pen pot for them scissors to open decks, my magnifying glass, smaller pair of scissors there, and just some pens that I, I use. And then let's move you around here. I'll talk to you about the decks that are my main players. So um, the decks that I like to, let me try and get that back in, there we go. The, the deck that, that I like to, to work with the most. So let's pop that back there. All right, so the only other thing to mention is I have a selenite sphere, which I like. I like it next to the candle because it glows. This is a uh, cloak uh, clasp um, that was sent to me by Christoph James, which was a lovely gift. My bell here, which you hear at the start of videos. Beautiful resonance on this. I've got a number of bells, singing bells or meditation bells. I bought that from Zen in uh, Birmingham. And then I really love this as well. I think this is a really beautiful tea light holder. So that lives here. And then I have a spray. This one is Beyond the Veil, so it's from Sons of Asgard. And I use this, um, whenever I'm about to go on, I use this to represent air. 
I spray spray it around my space um, whenever I do a live or whenever I'm about to do a reading and it has a beautiful beautiful mist to it and it smells amazing that will be changed soon for Yule so here the nine decks so I, I call these like my main players my um my trusted decks they will swap about from time to time and you've already seen i've got my llewellyn and i've got my moon baby and lions gateway um but i really these are the decks that i'm really enjoying working with um shimmering veil what can i say that hasn't already been said one of the most beautiful decks i own um, I've had some very, very powerful readings from this deck. It is incredible. I can never stop talking about it because it is just amazing. I can't see this ever leaving my reading space and going back onto the shelf just because of how deep a journey I go on when I'm working with this deck. Beautiful gilding as well. These are the backs which are stunning. Druid Craft is another classic. This is um, the one I tend to use. I've got two versions, one that has just the images, but <laughs> can we? Um, but this is so right away, so pagan. I just love everything about um, this deck. It is gorgeous. So Druid Craft, these are modified decks as well. Then we've got Witcher's Wisdom, which I'm I'm really loving the Witcher's Wisdom. It is a gorgeous deck, really beautiful. The artwork is stunning. Diane Barlow, I think her name is, um, but gorgeous. Ah, oh, look. <laughs> so that is a um, a beautiful deck. The nineteen oh nine. So this is a replica. Uh, it's the art restoration deck, but this is a replica of the very first 1909 uh, RWS that was only out for a few months before the Pam A was released in 1910. And this one here is a copy of the Pam A. And the cardstock for this, this is probably one of my favourite uh copies actually i really love it and it's the tarot deck for study course i don't think it's available anymore on npc then we have my soul deck this is my blushing fool um i don't need to say any more about it other than just how spectacular this deck is it's from 1971 um beautiful crisp images Gorgeous line work, papery soft card with no lamination, no copyright. Um, the colours aren't garish, as you can see here. And it's just, oh, if every tarot deck was made like this, I'd be a, a happy bunny. So that's those. Everyday Enchantment by Poppy Palin. Modified deck, I took all the borders off. I've said so much about this already. It's very expressive. It replicates life, general life in the UK. It's representative of different ethnicities, ages, body sizes, abilities. Oh, it's just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful deck. It is a deck that is inclusive without being tokenistic. It's just, it's what it is. The Dirty Pam, everybody loves the Dirty Pam um these beautiful color tones this came out a few years ago and yeah it's just it's an rws but with these dramatic uh colors i mean look at that for the temperance card so the dirty pan lives there and then the only oracle deck that is on my uh my go-to's is the Moonlight Oracle. You've seen it before if you've watched my channel for any period of time. Um, and this is an Oracle deck that takes images from the RWS um, for extra clarification on reading, something that you would want to focus on, 
that's on the tower card. You know, the Two of Pentacles, Hermit's Lantern, from the Judgment card, on the Fool card, etc, etc. High Priestess. So I really love this. There's the Fool's Dog. We've got Loyalty as a keyword. So I adore this deck. Really, really adore it. So that is also there on my on my reading space. Going on to this little tower here. Um, let's see if I can get them all in. We've got this tower here, which has all my Kelly Bear pouches. And um, again, important decks to me. Just want to mention um, what's on the top there. So you can just see here i've got the spread deck which i've had quite recently but i have this out because this is a deck whoops um where you can make your own spreads so it's got things like fears conflict so you lay down the cards shuffle your deck whichever deck it works with any deck and then um you know lay the cards on top to give yourself um a spread and then i've got this beautiful handmade this is what the look at that this is what my um this is the plastic cup which was down there that i popped in there but this is what housed the wooden cup that i've, I've showed you that's in front of my reading space so i'll just quickly go through these see the little ghost as well for halloween that's what kelly bear sent me so this one is my indie version of the light seers this one, as you can see, possibly with a metallic edge, is This Might Hurt, second edition, um, with the kind of metallic holograph sides. This one <laughs> is another version of my um, Tarot de Marseille, New Choice Tarot de Marseille, which is also in the drawer down there. This one here, I love this deck. This is one of my favourites. I've still got my favourites video to do. Uh, I'll do that in December. My favourites are 20, um, 2020. With this beautiful red sparkly edge deck. This is the Tiny, the Smith Tiny, which is so RWS, but a great one for young people, I feel. Well, I think it's for the child in all of us. Beautiful yellow to, to match the backs. And then the final one at the bottom is my Anna K Indie deck, um, which everybody's seen the Anna K. Um, and there is a mass market available version available, but I really prefer this chunky little deck here for Anna K. Just really gorgeous. So. And the Cade lives, lives there too. Right, so all that remains to show you really is what's on my shelves that are directly above my desk. And I'll try and find a way to do this without making it too, uh, too yucky, moving the camera around. Okay, so let me move that light because that's going to become distracting, isn't it? As you can see at the top, at the very top, I've got my little pixie homage, um, which is which is here. Um, that print was taken from the commemorative set when the, um, what's it called? The Centennial Tarot was released as a bit of a box set with some books that included the pictorial key and a book about pixie's artwork. There was lots of, um, postcards and pictures in there and I've had that framed for a few years now um, you'll see little things like um, some hairs I've got a moon gazing hair and a little hair there um, a pyramid now these pyramids are beautiful really really gorgeous um, pyramids as you'll see here if I can get it into into camera look at that really really beautiful so that sits up at the top this is my box for the um, tarot tiles, which I'll show you in a minute because I don't keep them in there anymore. 1889 
uh, Lenormand. Um, not a huge L Lenormand lover, uh, but this deck in particular is just, it's just gorgeous. So that goes in there. Um, this was sent to me quite recently when I bought the spread deck and it's the Theban, uh, Theban alphabet, which is the witch's alphabet or used by earlier cultists, but adopted by Wiccans as well. And that says the Hermit's Cave. My goddess from Molly and Mark over at Bridget's Grove. My print from when I bought the indie, indie version of the Lightseers, which has the Queen of Pentacles. Then in this chest, I've got an old Marseille deck that Kelly Bear, um, I'm not gonna say destroyed. She calls herself the destroyer of deck, but she aged it. This section here is all my playing card type decks. Um, and there's a couple of these little rock pool ones as well, but all of these here are different versions of playing card, which I use for cartomancy as well. Um, this leather bound book is a beautiful book that was sent to me by Elaine, um, at Elaine's Tarot Tats and Tea, I think it's her channel is called. If you think I'd know that by now, I watch it all the time. Um, and I use that to write the definitions for Mildred Payne's Secret Pocket Oracle because I built that collection up and each time they came with a different parchment paper. So I thought it'd be really nice to have an old leather bound book that has the meanings in there. So it was a bit of a labour of love, but I enjoyed doing it. Those books here are all Baba Studio companion books for Baba Studio's decks. Let's bring this down a little bit. And let's remove, um, let's remove the light. Okay. Again, just different books. You can see there's the uh, Stories of the Wild Spirit, which is a Poppy Palin uh, book. The Druid Craft is up there. Um, lots of different books. There's the Elemental Divination book, which is about uh, working with dice for divination, playing card divination, and just lots of little small journals like uh, junk journals. And then I've got my Bible. So I've got the Wicca Bible, the Tarot Bible, which is very old and battered now, Crystal Bible, Psychic's Bible, and Spells Bible. And then you'll see some decks this one at the bottom here with the hair on it is Oak, Ash and Thorn. Um, the other one is what I showed you earlier, the Tarot Des Oarks, the second edition. And then I've got some um, Carol Hertz decks there. This is my um, journal, my Traveller's Journal, Midori, you'll know it as. Um, and that's just where I write down ideas and things for the channel. Come down to this shelf here. We've got chalice well water, and that has the chalice well. I've got two size bottles. I've got the larger bottle at the back, and the smaller bottle here, which has only got a little bit left. But it's got the chalice well design on it. Um, and that one, actually, I put WS for White Springs. So this is White Spring water, which is opposite the chalice well. And the big bottle at the back is chalice well water. Um, it's full because I've already filled all my bottles from what I had uh, remaining. My dominoes, so I use them for divination. I'm not gonna get them out and show you them because I've showed you them quite recently. Um, I'll just show you one. They're in different types of wood, but they are gorgeous. The nice large ones, uh, we've got three, three here. It's about going in new directions. Um, let me try and get it back in now. That's the problem with doing something like this. Do you see the little design there? That was sent to me by Patrick Valenza. Um, he sent me this. This Hessian sack contains the Jamie Sawyer uh, tarot tiles. And this is from the 1909 um, tarot. Gorgeous. I love, I love 
if you just put your hand in and pull some out, um, you can cast them. So here we have the strength card. So they're beautiful. They were expensive, but um, it was an investment I was prepared uh, prepared to take, uh, prepared to make. And I think, guys, that, let me take it out the cradle a second. That is everything um, that you need to see. Did I mention just, this is a handmade stand that I have, I mentioned that I've got my Llewellyn cards on display here. Um, but this is a handmade um, stand that my stepfather did. This little uh, heart was sent to me from, it's a painted stone, I love it. This crystal I've mentioned so many times, it is one of my favourite crystals ever and it was a gift from my mum when we was on holiday, probably about eight years or so ago and it signalled the start of my mum coming to terms and accepting my spiritual path away from Mormonism, which I never thought she would buy me a crystal. Um, and then I have this sphere as well, which they all, they just sit there um, next to my um, reading space. So it, it's not the biggest space, but it's enough, you know, it's enough for me to sit here morning and night, lay my cards out, and just spend some time with with my cards and I've got everything around me um, that I need and that I enjoy. So yeah, that's it. So just a bit of an update. Um, let me know your thoughts. Do you, could you cope with this amount of stuff around you? Some people walk in like my sister, she hates it. She hates clutter. She's very minimalist and this brings out her anxiety, but actually, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy as a pig in muck sitting here with my, my stuff around me. What's your reading table look like? Let me know. I'd be interested to hear. Or if you do film, then let me know or tag me in it so I can so I can see yours. But thank you for watching everybody and until next time, go in peace. Namaste and blessed be. Thank you.